Good evening, everyone, and welcome to part three of the Look Finance SEQFC preview show with Thanks to Village Law. I'm Darren Lutton, and tonight we are a threesome, and we've got two old friends here that we've reunited them after maybe a couple of months when they last saw each other. But uh, we've got Liz Ridley from Ipswich City Bulls. Good evening, Liz. Hey, guys. Very good. And who's your mate behind you? Oh, good old Kev from the Ipswich Knights. Oh, behind me. Yeah. Smokey. Hang on. We will go for a walk if you like people. This is Smokey, our mascot bull, who even blows smoke. If you're lucky, lucky, you, can't, lucky you can't see what I'm doing now. Uh, no, you're always <laughs> you can smoke. imagine. But if you're lucky enough to catch the um, junior interview on the weekend with our captain from our BWPL team, Smokey was blowing smoke in the background. Good stuff. <laughs> How long has Smokey been at the club? Well, I've been here probably, oh, that's too long. That just gives my age away. Um, about 2002, I got involved in the club and Smokey was already here then. Fantastic. He goes to all the finals on the back of the trailer. We decorate him up, take him around. Anyone makes a grand final, Smokey will be there. That is awesome. <laughs> all right, Liz, so you're going to be uh, chatting BWPL with us <laughs> a little bit later this evening. Perfect. And the guy that's hiding there, uh, the guy who's got the, the face for uh, face for radio, it's Kev Alderdice. Kev, how are you? Good, good thanks. It's good to, be, good to be half here. It's good. <laughs> Kev, of course, you are Mr. Sunshine Coast Football, so we couldn't have a, a show talking about sunny coast football without you. So, so glad you could make time out of your busy schedule. Um, there mustn't be an under-sevens game going on tonight for you to cover. I've only done, I've only done 57 so far this year. Give me a break. That is insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. You must have run. You must have run out of things to say by now. No, no. There's, all, there's someone always does something stupid on the field, and something is, as you know, you know better than anything, Darren. If you've got to think before you talk, it never works. And now I don't think before I talk. I've been like that all the time. This, yeah. See, Liz is nodding. She, yeah, yeah. I know. It doesn't Green, think before he talks. <laughs> All right, so we'll kick things off with you, Kev. And as this is the first time that we've uh, chatted to each other, bring us up to date with everything that's happening in the Sunshine Coast with uh, with player movement, coach movement, all that sort of thing. Um, well, uh, Noosa have still got Kevin Evans, and that's they're probably the first big best signing they've had. They uh, uh, Andre Jankowski has come back to Noosa. That's great for Noosa. That's bad for everyone else. Um, they've also signed Addy Brader from um, from BGs. He uh, he's, he's an absolute flyer and a young bloke that probably won't crack the squad. A former uh, Sunshine Coast Wanderer, Ollie Blackmore. He's got a great engine running. A lot of Wanderers when they won the um, Premiership, they all went back to their clubs. They used there's a lot of Marucci boys. We used to call them the Swanderers back then, being the Marucci Swans. Um, yeah, and a lot of them went back. Uh, it was um, – who went back there about four of them? Jared Zammett went back for a start, the coach. He was he won the, the grand final in the under-20s. Uh, and uh, Carl Von Hoff went back, and uh, there were quite a few. Uh, Jimmy Entick Nap, which surprises me, he went back to the Swannies. I thought he'd give another year in uh, MPL because he, he is MPL quality. Um, Calandra got quite a few back. They got uh, Ray Schultz, Josh Fulshay, Kobe Fuller. And they uh, got a bloke up front, been there a few years, um, Ethan Galbraith. He will probably get Golden Boot this year. Um, he's an ex-all-white under 20. So he's, got, he's a former all-white, but he's got the build of an all-black. He's about <laughs> six foot six and at least 18 Arab biscuits across the shoulders, eh? Right. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, Kiwana in a rebuild phase because uh, they won the grand final last year. Good game beat... Um, NYU 4-0, um, but um, a lot of players then retired. They were all getting, well, they were experienced players. And they um, and they decided no, that'll do. So it's a rebuild phase for them. That's why they're down with us where we are. And we're on the same boat. Um, David Benstead, he was Calandra coach last year. He is now with us. And he's doing a good job with, um, with, with, what he's, with the players that he's got. Um, yeah, who else we got up there? Uh, Budrum, they are the surprise packets 
so far there are uh, the Wanderers, Sunshine Coast Wanderers. They uh, had a fitness regime and all the Budo boys jumped on board. So they're probably the best, the fittest side in the comp. And that's why they're leading the comp now. Uh, this BG signed a couple of good players as well. Um, they also, um, actually, there was a switch and Josh Sansusi has gone from uh, Nebo Yandina to BGs. But they Mitchell played, player player. Yeah. And uh, but, but they picked up Jacob Fullock, who scored um, Noosa beat BGs last week, uh, five goal oh, BGs beat, pardon NYU five goals to three. It was five nil, and Jacob Fullock scored three goals in five minutes to put yes. a bit of a, <laughs> to put a bit of a uh, put a bit of a scare into the Lions. Um, yeah, what about Gimpy? Cool, um, uh, Gimpy. Oh, this is interesting. Kyle Nix is uh, coach at Gimpy. They um, they're sort of like. Um, it's their blessing and their curse. They don't lose players, but it's hard to attract players up up the Bruce Highway. You know what I mean? But they've got a good solid uh, junior base, got a pretty good women's side. Um, yeah, and Kyle Nix is coach there. And I'll, I'll just mention this now. He is player coach at Gympie. Corey Nix is player coach at NYU. And you guessed it. They play each other this weekend. It's the Battle of the Bros. <laughs> what a... Fantastic segue into this weekend's matches, Kev. Okay. Well, um, Beaver Glasshouse, they're going to play Butto. Well, it's at Glasshouse, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going with Bud. Everyone's expecting them to fall over, but I don't think they will. They're probably the uh, the team in the five, the top eight of the five, that can still win the premiership. But I'm surprised you that they're there. Gimpy and NYU. I'm sorry, Kyle, I've got to go for NYU in that one. So I reckon Corey will get him, even though it's up at Gympie. Maruchidor, hey. even though it's in Gympie, Maruchidor will, will beat Coolum. Coolum will be brave. But they sort of have the same problem. But Noose is so close. Um, a lot of the, you know, it's difficult to keep players. Um, and, um, yeah. yeah. And as you said, it's... Um, That's by the weekend. Pardon? Match of the weekend. Match of the weekend. Oh, it's got to be beer with glass house and bedroom. No, no, Wumbai and Kiwana. Oh, no, well, it is for me. <laughs> Always is. Oh, we'll get to Kiwana. Bottom of the table, bottom of we'll the get, table we'll, clash. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to, we'll get Kiwana. But uh, we managed to have our first win last. It was a midweek game, beat Gimpy, which was a shock. It wasn't a shock for me. I always expect to win. And Noosa and Calandra have the bye. Both they teams do. have. Yes, that's of course. M- Mullaney play reserve grade. Right. I, come out of, I come out of thirds up to reserve grade, and so they have to organise that around them, but it, which is good because they're prepared to have a go, and the clubs were happy with it, and the league's happy with it because they're trying to improve. And they're not a bad side. They've got a couple of draws. Yep. So match of the round. Match of the round for me is obviously won by Kiwana. I'll be sitting on the hill. <laughs> That's at home. <laughs> no, so... I'm trying yeah, to well, wonder that's... you with, with Kyle Nix, and uh, hopefully we'll get to uh, get that done over the next couple of weeks. He's a, a very hard man to to track down. Let's move over to the women's league now, Kev. There's six teams in that competition. There are. Tell us the the stories there. Um, once again, uh, quite a few Wanderettes came back uh, to the league. Uh, Maruchador picked up most of those. Uh, they are. Or like NYU lead the competition, Maruchidor have, I uh, said in an earlier vlog tonight, surged into second place. Um, Wumbai's just come back after three or four years out. That is why we're struggling, but we had to come back. Otherwise, you can never come back. It just gets too far. It gets away from you. And the young sure. girls we have, they're not going to learn anything in thirds, but they're going to, trust me, they're learning plenty in prems. But <laughs> I, I, I think... Um, I think Maruchador will win it. Been this far out. Calandra are good. Any team with um, Chani Harris in it, yeah, they, she is fast and she can put the goals away. Uh, and also a young girl named Drew Aiken. I'll just tell you a funny, just a quick funny story about Chani Harris. I said Ethan Galbraith was going to get golden boot, right? And Chani's his partner. So I said to him, you might be the best striker in the league, but you're not the best striker in your family. <laughs> <laughs> and he's six foot six and weighs a ton. So I stood back right. from him a little bit. But no, I think 
uh, Marucci will get them. We'll, we'll, we'll win the premiership as it's a straight out race. Um, NYU are leading, but I, I think actually what happened, I'll tell you what happened there. They've had the one loss against NYU. Um, it, 3-1 with nine minutes to go. NYU beat them 4-3. That is a surprise, NYU on top, isn't it, Kev? Yes, yes, it is. It is. They've got some, they've got some really good players there. Um, uh, they've got the Sophie Cudlip and uh, these sorts of players. Kate Day, she's an absolute flyer. Um, and, yeah, it is a surprise. I, I don't think they'll stay there, but I think they'll be there about. So I just, I just, you just can't go past Marucci, I don't think, with the players. They've got the, the Scarf sisters. Uh, they both played at higher levels, and uh, yeah, I just think they'll they'll get the job done. Good stuff. Uh, suck suck me neck out there. Why not? That's what I'm here for. Even though you can't see my neck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out over the next few weeks, Kev, and yeah, I certainly have to look back every week to uh, to keep yeah. us updated with what's sure. going on. So yeah. thank you for that. That's all right. Let's let's move on to the NPLW now, and this is my responsibility to uh, to update everyone on this. So we had a, a couple of matches last night with uh, Logan Lightning taking on Mitchelton and Logan getting the the two one win there. Um, the Gap beat Football Queensland QAS three one. The ladder at the moment has Lions a, a clear three points on top uh, from Gold Coast United, who we thought they'd do well, but uh, they've done fantastically well so far this season. Uh, the Gap are in third place, but they played uh, some extra extra games. Logan Lightning in fourth and Easts, their couple of signings over the past couple of weeks has uh, really put them in the frame. They're in fifth place. Capalabar, they've uh, struggled so far this season and they're in sixth place with the investment that they've put into their squad uh they'd be really disappointed with uh, that so far so looking for a strong finish from them football queensland qas another side that you expect to improve as these young players get more experience playing against older bodies but looking for the matches this weekend the pick of the games is actually on Friday night at Heath Park, Eastern Suburbs taking on Lions FC. It's Archford Komodo. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Archie. Bodyguard. You need to stick around, Liz. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring, bring him in. Today? Yeah, we'll bring him in shortly. I'll be back. All right. So just going through the, the pick of the games, Friday night at Heath Park, Eastern Suburbs taking on Lions FC. So that's... Uh, fourth versus first, uh, a real acid test for Easts to see if these new players that they've got, new forward line with Alira Toby and Rosie Sutton in the squad. Uh, so they've got goals in them now. So it's uh, so important that uh, they'll now be able to match motors with with the teams, the likes of Lions, and hopefully that'll happen uh, on Friday night. The rest of the matches are sort of, Top of the table against the bottom of the table. Uh, the more interesting ones are the gap against Mitchelton. Mitchelton looking for them to show a little something there. Um, the gap will be a good match for them. I saw these two teams play in a trial a couple of weeks ago. It ended up a, a one-goal difference game. So if Mitchelton have improved a bit since then, then perhaps they could get something out of the game. Morton Bay United against Souths. South should win that one comfortably. Football Queensland QAS against Logan Lightning. Um, Logan Lightning have made some big moves and got some some quality players in, uh, notably Amy Jackson from the from Victoria, who was with uh, Morton Bay last season. She scored a screamer last night, a sensational goal. So she's already uh, paid for her airfare anyway. And uh, yeah, interesting to see if Logan can kick on from that. They've um, lost uh, their star, superstar import with the uh, with the COVID action that's going on, and they've replaced with some local players. And interesting to see if they can kick on. Anyway, that's enough of the MPLW. Let's move on now to the BWPL. I'm just doing the COVID stuff. <laughs> See right. I did the COVID sheets. Very. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just another job for you, Liz, eh? Just another yeah. job. Pile it on. <laughs> G'day, Kev. All right, Liz, this is your show. You want to do Archie first and he can ha have a little chat with Archie and he can go home and I'll stay? No, Archie can back you up. Oh, oh this will be good. So you've got to be in the shot. I'm in the shot. It's all right. The ball's more important. 
So, Liz, <laughs> tell, us about, tell us about the BWPL this season. Okay, so a bit of an ups and downs start, I think. No one's really standard, stood out the first couple of weeks. Um, the buyers sort of throwing things out a bit, you know, with people playing, people aren't playing. I think a couple of teams are still trying to find their feet as well. Um, like, I, we played Lakes a couple of weeks ago. Was expecting a lot tougher game than we got. But I think they'll improve as the season goes on as well. Um, Coomera last weekend, fantastic game. Not going to just flush that we, we won. But um, it was a really good game to watch. Both reserve grade, topside girls, both teams never gave up till the end. Um, and Penn Power, as much as at the top of the table, let's just see if they can maintain that. Um, they haven't actually been pushed that hard. But I think this week, with coming up against UQ, they might. So this week could be the decider with the Penn Power UQ. But being in Virginia, sort of sitting around the middles and whatnot, it's only week three. It's a long way to go. A lot of teams affected by COVID. Yeah. With uh, the Lakes losing Emily Ribello to the uh, MPLW, how, or she may have even gone back to, back to the United States, um, that's a massive loss for their defence. I think it, it, they've lost a few good players this season. Um, after being up there and talking with one of the, the ground officials, actually, after, after the game, he was saying they've got... They lost a lot from their reserve grade. So they're not from the top sides. So they have to push some reserve grade up and they've got some C leagues coming in. But they are starting to get some new people come back through again. I mean, I know we're still getting people now. We had a new girl at training tonight. People are just coming out of the woodwork. Two. Two. Yeah, two. Yeah. There you go. They're coming out of the woodwork. And we're like, what, August? And we should be coming up to the end of the season, not the start of the bloody thing. So sure. I think people have gone, okay, maybe I'll give it a crack this year. And they're still coming. But we can't pack new teams. <laughs> so we've just got to manoeuvre people where we can and stop breaking them. Yeah. There's a lot of injuries I'm noticing across the board. Not just our team, a lot of teams. I'm hearing feedback. They're all getting injuries. And I don't know if it's because with COVID, the field preparations weren't there and they weren't maintained. So the field quality is not there. And people haven't come back with the same fitness levels that they had round one when we played round one. So there's a few niggly injuries, a couple of season-ending injuries already. But, yeah. Archie, what's your take on uh, the season so far? Playing against your old club last week, how was that? Oh, it was an interesting game. Hey, look, um, yeah, it, was, it was a good game. I was expecting that from Quiver. Um, I think both teams still have did show their true colours, uh, so they didn't play their best. So it was a good game. It was a fight. And lucky enough, we were able to take the win, which was good. Um, Liz is doing this on the side. <laughs> but, yeah, that no, was a good game. I did and, it every uh, game. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, to the second beginning up. Very good. Uh, do you think Coomer will be the, the toughest challenge from the, the Gold Coast teams? Uh, at the moment, yes, from what I've seen, from all the results. I think in the whole comp as well, I think Coomer and Penn Power are going to be quite hard. And Annalise being sneaky. I know what Greg's doing over there. He's very quiet, but Greg is looking pretty strong as well. And you can never rule out Costa. Costa is Costa. Costa will talk like his team is not doing well, but you play against him and he'll pull something out of somewhere. So, yeah, but, uh, but Krumer, Krumer is the team to beat. I reckon they'll be very hard for most teams. Costa is, of course, the coach of Virginia United, who are away at Rabina City this weekend. Uh, just going through those fixtures, uh, apart from Peninsula Power and UQ, are there any other games that, that stick out for you? Uh, I think the Lakes and Coomera could be a big game because I know after two losses, the Lakes you haven't had a win last week. Uh, but, look, I think... <coughs> Look, the score was 5 0 against us, but yeah, I think he still has quality in there. He's still very fast with these players up front. And with the keeper, like they have Gemma, it's going to be hard to get most there. So if Gemma does plays the way, we, the way we know Gemma plays, and one of those fast players get out there and they score a goal, it's a different game. But it could be a big score for Kumra, or it could be a, a 1 2 0 win for four legs. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm looking. Looking for uh, the Lakes to get their defence together. I, the, from what I've seen of them so far, and I have actually managed to run into them twice this season, 
Um, yeah, they've got to get their defence sorted before they can go forward. Yeah, and Rabina and Virginia. Rabina, Rabina's too strong, and I know Costa's too struggling with injuries, and he's got a few nurses in his team as well. But hey, like I said, it's Costa. Costa is is a silent assassin. I'm telling you. Don't be surprised if he finds his way in top four when he rickets. Oh, I'm struggling. Yeah, it's a lot of crap. <laughs> Sneak his way up. Yeah, it's there. a lot of crap. We know you, Costa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this isn't about bantering. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for sticking around and having a chat there, Archie. Much appreciated. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just right, make sure you. someone stays there with me. All right, so I'll make sure I'm Okay, bye. Get back to Liz, the expert. Very good. Uh, <laughs> right, now that's pretty much the show for this week. So uh, all done. Thank you both for your contributions and uh, looking forward to this banter between you two flying over the, the next few weeks. Should be great. Not a problem at all. Yeah, I only pick on me friends, Liz. My enemies aren't worth it. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you. All right. No, you too. Well, I'll see you hopefully next week. Right now, I'm looking at skulls. But yeah, how good's good's that? It's just that, your yeah. age my, my, that's, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Get that camera sorted, Kev. I, I might have to. Yeah, or, or at least you get a different photo up there. All right, then. All right, this is part three of the Look Finance SEQFC preview show with thanks to Village Law. Get out to a game this weekend. The, the clubs need your support. So, uh, Get to a ground.